Hey friends, welcome to One Little Coder. In this video, we are going to see how can you create your own web application with GPT-3 key. So a lot of times what happens is that you might have applied for uh, OpenAI beta access, uh, GPT-3 beta access, and you might have got the key, but uh, it may not be easy for you to get started with. And uh, thanks to uh, Shreya Shankar, in this project, a GPT-3 sandbox is to help you to get started uh, with uh, your GPT-3 uh, let's say endeavor so all you need is the key so if you have applied for beta access you would have probably already got the api key so in this video uh, we are going to just go through this this particular tutorial and see how you can use this particular sandbox tutorial which is like a template for you to get started with your uh, gpt3 um, first web app and uh, how you can you know quickly run your first web application just we are just going through this um, the first thing uh, the requirements that you need is you need to have the api key uh, i think uh, that's um, that is mandatory without api key you cannot do anything uh, so this video definitely requires api key without api key we are not doing anything so if you really want to build a text generation model even without the api key so i've made a video using gpt2 previously i'll link it in the description you can check it out but for this gpt3 open ai you need api key so next thing is you need to have a python 3 installation uh, set up on your machine and then that python 3 installation should be available on your um, machine path computer path which means if you if you go here and type python 3 or python so you need to get something like this so you need to have that installation properly set up so the next thing is you need to have yarn installation setup you can check um, yarn installation setup like this so you need to have yarn installed properly and you need to have yarn added to your path so th this is again mandatory so this video assumes that you have all these three then uh, the first step is first you need to clone the repo so let's go and uh, clone the repo uh, simply we can clone the repo so we have to go to the desired directory let's say i want to go into my documents um, after i go inside my documents i'm going to clone this repo mm, where is the repo code so i'm going to clone this repo git clone and i'm cloning the repo so this is uh, basically if you do not have git you don't have to worry you can just download this repo and then unzip it so you can either download this as zip and then unzip it but uh, if you if you have git then it is easier to use that so now let us enter this repository cd uh, gpt3 and you can see ls uh, you have all the files that you can see here it is available here so cloning is successful at this point so now the next step is next step in this is you have to create a virtual environment uh, so uh, you have to create a python virtual environment in my machine python 3 is usually invoked by uh, python 3 so i'm going to use python 3 i'm going to ca call it with the alias python 3 but uh, if you have already python 2 uh, sorry if you have already uh, an alias setup with python you can just simply call it as python but i'm going to say python 3 m v n and uh, I'm calling my virtual environment name also VNF, uh, but uh, it's up to you. You can give any name. You can like give one little coder or whatever name you like, but I'm going to call it VNF. So at this point, our virtual environment is getting created. Now the virtual environment is successfully getting created. Uh, it has got created. So the next step is we have to activate the virtual environment. So if you are a Windows user, uh, you have to do this. Um, you have to activate it like this. Uh, but uh, you can check it uh, so i'm going because i'm on mac i'm going to show you using uh, the mac method source vn that's the first folder bin and activate so you don't even probably have to type it vn uh, slash uh, then you can say tab you will get bin then select bin then tab you will get activate click activate and type so at this point you can see even if i clear um, you would see that we are inside the virtual environment we have activated the virtual environment uh, so if you, if you are completely new to virtual environment concept virtual environment is something that you create for a particular project so that your systems uh, your machines python uh, packages and versions uh, do not affect your current uh, project environment so this is like a uh, this is this is um this is in fact very appropriate to say it uh, during a cold uh, time uh, this is like an isolation center where uh, the this uh, this particular environment doesn't interact with the external environment and the 
dependencies do not uh, have problem so you create everything within this so once you are you are done with this thing next thing is you have to install the required packages for this particular project and the way we can do it is pip3 uh, r and the the packages are uh, available the requirement.txt is available here if you see within api requirements.txt so this is what we are going to install so we are going to say api slash requirement you can just click tab and then it will start installing so at this point it is starting to install uh, that is another thing you can see and uh, one one more small thing is if you are on a windows machine while you are doing this you have to also do one more thing which is in this sub process i'll just zoom it this sub process uh, here it says sub process but you open yarn start you have to say comma start shell so if you are on windows sorry shell is equal to true if you are on windows you have to just say shell equal to equal to true if you are on windows you have to do this uh, right now i'm not going to do this uh, but inside your code not on the repository but inside your code you have to do that so now all our packages are successfully installed um that is uh, done so now the next step is we need to we need to add our secret key so somewhere so now we need to create okay so again why do we have to create this we have to create this so that we don't expose the raw key like let's say i'm making a video or i'm making a code so i don't have to expose the raw key somewhere so what we do is we create a configuration file and then keep that file somewhere in the machine and, and that file will have our key and that path is added as a value to this environmental variable environment variable sorry so again just to repeat so instead of directly hard coding the key on the code which is not advisable all the time what is advisable is you create the key uh, as a configuration file uh, with this value somewhere on your machine and use that path to create this environment variable and the value is this path so when you do this thing anywhere on your machine if you use this um, with the uh, your dollar so then you can see that this this will load that okay so now the step is we need to create a text file configuration file i think i already have yeah so you need to have a text file when i say text file um, uh, .cfg file open ai.cfg and you would have got an api key something like this that would look like this and that key within quotes you have to add saying open capitals may open a underscore key is equal to you have to give that so once you do that now you are done with step four so that api key that you got from open ai part of the beta so that's what you have to put here and save it anywhere on your computer but once you do that um, once you do that then the next step is you have to do this which is export this one i'm not going to press enter uh, wherever i have added that path i have to give that path let's say in my computer if it is like users um documents blah 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 then i have to give that path and now i am setting this environment of variable environment variable open ai underscore config is equal to that path so that whenever i need uh, that api key in my code i will just simply use open ai underscore config i'm not going to use the entire thing so let's erase it remove it okay okay that's done so now at this point uh we can feel that everything is everything is done so we successfully created a python uh, virtual environment we successfully installed the required packages we set up our api key we added it to the the environment path uh if you are if you are on windows you might have to use set if set is not working you have to go to your control panel uh, edit environment variable and then add that um, uh, add this in your val variable and this in your value this 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 means not exactly this but your path where you have saved uh, open ai.config so once you are done with all those things now you have to do yarn install yarn install on the root directory so i am currently in the root directory i, I didn't go inside any other directory i am doing everything in the root directory so yarn install when you do yarn install it will install the required packages so this package uh, i my javascript cells are very poor 
but I believe that this is using um, create react app template uh, to create this app so if you go see all the code you can see uh, sorry you can see the package.json and you can see what are all packages that are required like dependencies uh, react packages and then that is getting installed right now at this moment um, if you are on windows you might face a few issues with uh, es6 compatibility uh, you might need a javascript expert to get it done but uh, i think if you are on mac this works uh, just right out of the box like a charm so let's hope uh, it looks like it is successfully installed so at this point uh, we have successfully uh, set up our python uh, dependencies we have successfully set up our javascript sorry react js dependencies so why do we need react js is something that you might ask so somewhere in the document you might see that the back end of this is python uh, that's where uh, you know api calls are made and then the front end of this uh, web application that we are going to just run is uh, react based so uh, the front end react would have you would show some text box where you would type some text and then it would show some result that is your ui front end that user of interface is connected to a python backend that would make the api call and get you the details and all those things so at this point uh, right now we can assume that everything is set up so with that assumption that everything is set up we can start uh, running our first uh, web application like i said before doing that if you are on windows you have to you have to make sure that you add shell is equal to true so now we can get into examples inside examples you can see what are all examples you have uh, there is an analogies app uh, blank application command to email app uh, latex app uh, so the, all these apps are there so uh, I, i'll start with analogies app um, so to quickly show you python 3 run analogies run it so now you can see that first it will start oh, i hope it is going to start running okay it is not running it says open a config is not set in this runtime okay so that is a problem which means uh, it didn't set up i didn't set it up properly let me quickly see where it is saved it looks like my environment path was not set up properly so what i have to do is i have to say export open ai underscore config equal to uh, the path so now let's hope that it is done now i'm going to try running it again which is um python 3 run uh, i hope my my friend who gave me the api key has not revoked my access if it is not then we'll have a gpt3 web application successfully up and running if not this is the step um i'm hoping that uh, you can uh, you can spin up your web application using the steps that we just saw until now and then you'll be able to play with gpt3 which uh, which many people believe uh, is one of uh, the biggest um, nlp moment in 2000 20 which is kind of a pretty bad a lot of bad things happened in this year so some positivity the time and, and a difficult time so this is the local host okay uh, the link where uh, gpt3 is going to start so it is still spinning up and still trying to get up and running we have to wait for a couple of seconds last time when i tried it didn't take this much time so i'm not sure what's happening here that takes so much time uh, meanwhile i can show you one more thing which is all these examples you can actually see the code of these examples you can go here examples click examples you can see the code of these examples for example if you see the analogies app you can see like how that app works so basically uh, uh, there is a particular set of parameter that is set and then this is the example text so this is an analogies app so when you give something like this 
uh, it would generate something like this. So you give a particular set of examples to GPT-3 to say that, okay, this is how I want text. So you're basically telling that if I say this, I want something like this, sorry. If I say this, I want something like this. So you add a bunch of examples and after you have that example, uh, then um, you configure your, um, you just, um, you just give the uh, sample value in your UI and then that's it, your app is up and running. So this is the same uh, um, principle that is, that is followed in everything. I might probably stop this and uh, run, run it. Let me run it again. Um, it's showing some input output error. I'm not sure if there is any other instance that is running. Running on 5000. My apologies. I think uh, I was looking at a wrong link probably or was it 5000? Yeah, I think I was looking at. Okay. So okay, the Flask app app is uh, running on five thousand, but uh, we we are looking forward for the React. So let's let's wait for it to let's wait for it to start. So I was saying that um, uh, so the, here you can look at the examples, and if you want to create your own um, example like a GPT three example. So here is the step. So you have to get started with these steps. Um, so this is basically your code, and uh, you have to uh, give a bunch of um, you have to give a bunch of examples here, like what kind of examples you want, and then you should start adding more examples. You should construct more examples so that GPT-3 actually knows like what kind of input are you planning to give and what kind of output uh, it will generate. And uh, once you have that in place, you can just uh, call the UI uh, with, with these details and then you can just uh, call the function demo web app which will which will uh, execute the react uh, application uh, and you have uh, you have your GPT-3 web application up and running and you can start showcasing fancy things on the internet. The compilation has been successful finally uh, so which means it's a good news so we can open the URL which is um, the first URL that I opened was wrong. Uh, it was a Flask URL. Now it is a React URL. So now we have opened it. So this is an analogous generator. So we can just quickly say that let's say um, cricket is like. Am I even typing? Cricket is like. If I type and then click generate, it should ideally say what cricket is like um but it looks like it is not generating so and find your api key incorrect api key looks like um like i said the api key that was provided to me was um revoked but i think uh, that's okay so this is the point i think you got the point so you can you can run different um, examples and then you will get something with this and uh, that will help you get started with your GPT-3 endeavor. So you can start building uh, 